I was a ballet dancer and I was uh, dancing for um, since the time I was three years old. And then uh, towards the end of my professional career, I was starting to think about what I might want to do next as my kind of phase two. What would I be able to do that would still be within this world of the performing arts? There were some hard skills that I wanted to develop, but also because I wanted to expand my network. I wanted to be immersed in a community of people who were like-minded and wanted to pursue the same things professionally. I actually applied twice. Um, so the first time that I applied, I was interested in business, I was interested in theater, and I was like, you put them together, you get theater management. And so I applied to the program, um, got an interview, came in for my interview, and they basically said, no, but you should go back out there and make sure you're 100% sure this is what you want to do. Um, and also make sure that you really have a, like, a strong identity and like why this is important to you. I found myself at work thinking about, you know, what are ways that we can change the American theater field and like, how do we make staffs happier? And I was thinking about a lot of these like big picture leadership questions that I realized uh, I wasn't going to get just from, you know, the job that I was doing. I'm someone who loves plays. I'm, I'm an administrator, but I'm also an artist and I love the work of the theater. And, um, did a few theater internships after I graduated from college, uh, and then somehow got suckered into the world of film for like five years, which was a which was a terrible mistake. And so I say that I had my my uh, Dolly Levi hello Dolly before the parade passes me by moment, uh, and uh, decided that I really wanted to rejoin the the field of the theater. The way we're trained at Yale Drama in the teaching hospital of Yale Rep is really helpful in kind of clarifying uh, what areas within a not-for-profit regional theater are most interesting to you and in what areas you can bring the most skills. There are a number of programs that one can go to where you learn kind of the technical skills of being a theater administrator. You learn how to create a budget. Um, you learn how to, uh, you know, make a really solid spreadsheet. But um, <laughs> I think that this program is unique in that it trains you to be an enabler of art and someone who knows how to make art happen. Yeah, I think that managers sometimes get a bad reputation as being the person who says no, like as though there's some kind of opposition between the person making the art and then the person helping to fund it or facilitate it. And here, because we are working in a conservatory and in collaboration with each other, we really want to say, well, that might be a challenge, but let's see if it, it can work. Let's see if we can make that happen. I think that's a unique mentality to our program. And I would say that the way that the faculty and staff treat us as well when we hold these positions are as staff members. Mm -hmm. So I was at a meeting yesterday and they were like, this is Danny, she's the Associate Director of Development of Yale Rep in the School of Drama. And that was how I was introduced, because mm -hmm. that's my title, right? That the other day, Vicky was puzzling over a question about what to do about uh, a particular contract. And she had talked it over with an agent and gotten one perspective, talked it over with her general manager, Kelvin, and got another perspective. And then she called Lucy, who is my supervisor, the uh, associate managing director of the rep, into her office and myself and uh, asked us our opinion. And at first, I thought it was kind of an intellectual exercise. And I thought she was kind of just engaging us and seeing uh, seeing what we might offer. Uh, but then she came back and the next day she said, I really thought about what the two of you said. I'm actually, I've actually changed my perspective. The people who, who accept us into this program, and for, for us, that is Vicki, Joan, uh, and Kelvin, ultimately, they accept us because they believe in us and they think we have something to offer in this place and in the field. 